Um, what do all the of these following three cases have in common? So you're applying for a visa to the UK and it's denied because as it turns out, um, the algorithm behind it is racist. Or you're applying for a loan and like it happened last year with the Apple card, if you happen to be a woman, you just get a very, very much lower credit frame approval. Or you're applying for a job and like two years ago with Amazon, the screening bot decides that only male applicants are better for IT jobs. So you don't get that either. And now you're wondering, how can that be? Why is nobody responsible for that? And the typical answer is usually, ah, it's the AI, we can't do anything. Well, we can do something and it's giving that AI bias-free data. Bias-free data is, wants to enable data scientists to build bias-free AI models and thereby unlock business opportunities for their companies. So let's look into bias-free data. What's actually the problem with data bias? So AI models don't just take over the bias, they amplify the bias. So the situation gets worse. It's now a rule. Also, you will lose business opportunities because these AI models will make some recommendations that are unfavorable. And lastly, very likely if this becomes public, you will have reputation damages and even fines to pay. In fact, nine out of 10 companies have reported that there has been some ethical uh, issues with some of their AI systems. In comes bias-free data, which wants to make AI models more fair and unlock bias opportunities, uh, business opportunities by offering bias-free data sets. And the clue is that we don't wanna focus on images or video, actually we wanna focus on the most data, the transaction data that is present in the world. Like when you apply for a job or make a transfer, send back a, a package, order something online, that's all transaction data. So there's huge amounts of uh, transaction data out there and it's very, very biased. So in order for companies to work on better business opportunities, we will provide curated training sets. So this gives them bias-free data to train their AI models on and um, yeah, unlock those opportunities. And at the same time to establish trust with their customers, we will test their models and rate their performance like with Michelin stars. Passion for fair tech means uh, deep knowledge and bias. And uh, why do we actually do that? Because we believe technology should benefit us humans, both the consumers, but also the businesses instead of holding us back. So um, the reason that I've chosen this idea or it has chosen me is because uh, I'm a senior product manager at a global SaaS company and I also recently were trained in anti-Semitism discrimination counseling, and I was among the top 10 of a global LGBT plus leadership contest and completed diversity training. I won the pitch competition at Exathon 2020, and I've also applied for the high-tech seed lab in Antler to carry this idea further. The business model behind it is a data commerce platform and model ratings. So we would sell those bias-free data sets specific to the domains, and of course, there's different tiers depending on the volume and the complexity of the data sets, and we would charge for updates. And we also test and rate the AI models. Uh, of course, there will be a fee for each certificate. Now, if we look at the market, um, there are already synthetic data startups. Uh, they claim to care about bias too, but they rather do it on the side and not really thoroughly in all the dimensions. If you look at current data marketplaces, they don't have any indication of quality at all and bias is also not among them. And then there's two startups that are trying to take a nick, a nick at it. Abacus is um, taking care of produ production monitoring from AI models and unbiased.cc is more about fake news uh, detection with blockchain. So this is kind of an untapped market, but it's huge. So worldwide spending in AI will inc increase double uh, by 2024 to 110 billion. And in Europe, it will even triple from last year's 7 billion to 21 billion, 2023. So the Gordon market plan is right now, we're in the validation phase, talking to many data scientists and uh, probable candidates with use cases. And we want to win our first play, uh, paying client very soon in the new year and then build partnerships and scale. 
So let's unlock AI business opportunities together. Thank you. Well done, Carla. On the spot, exactly five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so questions. Questions, anybody? Michael. Yeah, going uh, first again. Thank you for the presentation. Nice storytelling. Um, when you uh, talked about, or before you talked about your business model, I assumed it's uh, basically consulting business and uh, the rating. But then you said your business model also comprises um, selling data. So my one question will be, uh, how do you get the data in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> and secondly, how do you avoid an unconscious bias in cleaning the data? Okay, I, I see you have some knowledge there. So <laughs> answer, answer to the first question is, um, so consulting would not be scalable. And my intention is really to build a scalable tech business. Um, so uh, like building these data sets and selling them. And of course, consulting manual work would there be in the beginning, but then uh, later on, it should really, really scale. Um, and of course, you can automate a lot of stuff. And of course, the you have a lot of bias along the way. You have bias in the data collection. That's, I think, what you are kind of referring to. You have bias in the pre-processing of data. And then also later, when the models are already running, like the production monitoring, where is it going? Is it drifting? And the only real um, kind of countermeasure there is to have a lot of different perspectives on that. So I'm planning to build a very diverse team and have also different mentors. And I'm well connected in the diversity inclusion scene already for the last uh, four years. So I have no worries in there. Um, and of course, like monitoring and, and setting benchmarks and measuring the outcomes constantly uh, is one way to, to tackle that. Thank you. The other Michael, ah, oh, Kai. I have, yes, I have another okay. question as well. Um, thank you very much for the presentation, Carla. Uh, it's, it's quite an interesting and an intriguing problem and one could go even further to say, right, that in, in the United States, there, there is data being sold to government agencies, i.e. to the police um, mm -hmm. on, on sort of crime or criminal actions and, and crime prediction, leading to mm -hmm. an even more biased data set, hence black people being pursued by the police for no reasons. And this is, this is an even bigger issue. But I, I really like the approach. And I really like what, what you're trying to go for. What I currently still don't understand is, which data domains essentially would you want to focus on, right? Because data per se is, is vast and is huge. Mm -hmm. And understanding which domain you want to focus on, the next question would then be, is providing the data, would you have uh, a proprietary access to this data? And, and, and I'm assuming in some cases not. So my question is, would providing data really be the best focus for you? Or could even sort of finding biases in the first place be an even bigger value lever for you, or at least a lever into the market. Yeah, and, and the what you just mentioned uh, was actually like my original idea to find existing bias in the historical data of companies. Turns out this is not scalable at all. So the idea was to have algorithms that would run over data sets and figure out some kind of bias. But mm -hmm. since bias is such a soft uh, you know, topic, it's really hard to teach an algorithm what, how does bias look like in one data set and then the context completely changes how does it look like in the other one that's why i'm now going for this more standardized curated data sets which i will like either take from open data sources that already exist now um, mm. or what you can also do is partner with um, data marketplaces and they get kind of a cut uh, and you take their already existing data sets and make them bias free so you have again this more established trust Right now, like talking to a lot of data sets, that's really the, the most scalable, most technical way into bias that I see. But I would love to discuss it if you have other experts at hand. Mm. I think the a very cool way to go about it, right? Because I think you mentioned the, the lone example of, of women receiving worse, um, mm -hmm. essentially worse terms in, in borrowing cash or whatnot. Uh, is to be able to really to truly compare the cost for a potential customer, right? So what, what kind of money are you losing out on based on a wrong or sort of a, a biased data set? Mm -hmm. And that's again, sort of plays back into, into that question is understanding what domain of data you want to focus on and sort of take that as a first vertical rather than going 
very broad into the space and say we mm -hmm. we solve bias in data yeah so a, a very obvious one is the lending one and uh, it has already been shown that if the face-to-face -face lending conversation is moved to to online um, and the, the bankers don't see that person being a woman, already women get more credit. So um, that, that lending is a very obvious choice. Of course, uh, I'm, I'm talking to um, yeah banks. That's a little bit complicated because of all the NDAs and, and regulations and so on to have them work with a startup at that early stage. Uh, but I'm talking to some. Uh, another very obvious one is HR, um, so that you look into uh, bias-free hiring, so really the best person gets into the company and they're not losing candidates because of bias. Um, and then you could even think about helping HR building their, um, their hiring uh, bots themselves, assisting in that way, or partnering with ATS, like applicant tracking systems like uh, Greenhouse and, and Bamboo and so on to give them uh, the possibility to do that bias-free hiring. Yeah. Actually, like in, in one hour, I think I have the next call with an HR uh, um, department from Dell just to discuss this. <laughs> nice. Great to hear, uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, Carl, Carl Heinz, uh, one of our mentors uh, wants to ask a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Ram. Thanks, Carla, for your presentation. Uh, one question from my side, maybe I didn't really get it right, but uh, once uh, with regard to your, with your um, mentioned proof of concepts at the beginning of your presentation, they all relate to personal data. So I guess it would be a bigger issue if you want to train or if you want to analyze based on personal data with regard to the general data protection regulation. Mm -hmm. or in Germany called DSG uh, mm -hmm. VO. So how do you anonymize, anonymize data or what you also mentioned is that you synthesize data. So what's your approach? Because I guess whenever you get uh, with, in touch with a client, that would be one of the first questions. How can you assure that the data is anonymous, anonymized and how you identify what will be the drift based on real data or what is the drift based on synthesized data for example mm -hmm. yeah so, so if you're how, talking how about uh, if, if you're talking about the production monitoring and uh, figuring out the drift that would be on premise at a company and then they would of course have the right to look into their own data so in that case like there wouldn't be any synthesized data um, of course, anonymization uh, has like the reputation of being like revertible, so you can actually find out data again. So it, it's not safe. That's why there's a lot of uh, synthetic uh, data startups. Um, at the same time, you have to be careful, as you say, not to introduce like false uh, assumptions in when you synthesize data. So that's a very tricky point. And here, I also say this is kind of. I'm, I'm the business person behind it. I come from the bias and diversity side uh, and the data scientists that I'm working with, we're trying to make a prototype and we probably run also in, in more, uh, more trouble. Um, right now we have to still find like a, a solution for that, but we are aware. So I can't tell you the solution, we're working on it with a prototype. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 